two time champion, a former rookie of the year, North Fort Myers, Florida. His opponent qualified by winning last week's Richard Carlton, Brian Hawks. 18 time champion, PBA Hall of Famer from Atlanta. Our fourth seed, Doug Kent, pulled out of Canadago, New York. He won his first PBA title last year at the Greater Detroit Open. His opponent, Steve Jaros, owns two titles. He's after his first win since 93 from Bolingbroke, Illinois. Our second seed, Pete Weber, trying to win his 24th title in front of a hometown crowd. Pete Weber. And our tournament leader, at whom he pointed a moment ago, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., third one of the year. That's what he's looking for from Stockton, California. Hello, everyone. Bo Burton and I are happy that you join us today for our 14th of the year, last who knows when, but nevertheless, uh, Bo, we have 68 or so titles among our bowlers here today, and uh, the excitement is going to be hectic here, and if we can keep the tears away, pal, <laughs> we'll do all right. Well, 36 years for Miss, Mr. Shankle, 23 for me, but I think... Three Dog Night put it best. The show must go on. So let's go. The curtain is going up and it'll come down later, too. See you later. The 1997 version of the King of the Hill matches, it was Ricky Ward unseating Walter Ray Williams Jr., the number one player in the world. Ricky won the Detroit Open and bowled a fabulous 257 as he took the best and measure of Walter Ray. Today, he'll try to defend his King of the Hill title against the Wichita Open winner, Brian Boss. Brian should be very tough. Won last week, finished fifth this week, and one of the great competitors in all of PBA history. Next, the King of the Hill match. Okay, King of the Hill match, presented by the Showboat. Well, here's the setup for the King of the Hill, Chris. Uh, Brian Boss had an excellent week, finished fifth in the tournament, just missed the championship round. And Ricky Ward, who just whacked Walter Ray last week, really struggled this week in the tournament. It's going to be interesting to see if the lefty can compete with the righty. Here we go. Oh, a pesky four pen for Brian Boss. Coincidentally, was two years old when we started this series of telecasts back in uh, 19... Uh, 62. Ricky Ward, on the other hand, uh, waited eight years to be born after we got started. The four pin for Voss at a good opening shot. 50 lane bowling center. Synthetic lanes laid over the old wood lanes. Beautiful. $10,000 to the winner. And the winner naturally walks away with the check. The loser. A lot of glory by being on our last telecast, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Two things to watch for Ricky Ward here. Number one, last week he only averaged 202, but came out and shot 257, as you see him with a somewhat errant shot here in his first frame. And look at that rack. If you'll notice very closely, the one and three pins are separated on the right and closed on the left. And what that does, uh, really, is it makes it very difficult for the left-hander to penetrate into the five pins. So it's a slightly open rack for the right-handers, a big disadvantage for Ricky Ward. Now, he's playing a medium line in this area, and he's throwing a real solid lifted ball right between the second and third arrows. Well, he uh, left one on the opposite side now, a six pin. I'd like to point out here early that I've only had two full-time sidekicks on this series. The first was Billy Whalu, and for the last 23, Bo. Thank you, partner. It's been a pleasure. And I might add that we're in the Jack Buck's hometown, although he was born in Ohio. Um, he worked with me for a while, as did Jim Simpson. Some big names there. Mm -hmm. Jack Buck, an avid bowling fan. Now we look at Brian Boss. Look at him in front of the rack. He's playing the big hook, and these racks stick out about six feet on the approach, and Brian's goes in front of him. <laughs> Rather unusual leave. Brian Boss crosses over Never to... Never seen that some in my life. <laughs> Never. All right, and we'll see it here as you see him coming from an inside line, not playing that extreme outside line we saw before. Now watch the action on the left-hand part of the screen. The ball actually drives through and takes out the four straight back, and I agree with him. I've never seen a solid Brooklyn 7 pin. 
Very unusual. So this is the King of Hill match, the showboat King of the Hill match, and it's featuring Brian Voss, who won in Wichita, and Ricky Ward, who won in Detroit. The full grip of Voss, great player, but his main weapon is physical strength. This guy is physically strong. Across the Mississippi River, not too far from the great metropolis of St. Louis. Six ten. Well, what Ricky Ward is trying to do is the same as probably trying to hit a driver 300 yards into a 12-yard wide yeah. fairway. Look at how tight this pocket is as this camera pans in. See the one and three are wide open. Well, that's for the right-handers. The lefty's very tight. Dave Schroeder, who is down controlling things on the headset in connection with our producer, Carol Letty, and our director, Norm Samet. Good, good break for Ricky Ward getting his first strike in four frames. As we have a little feedback, we're going to leave and return. Here at St. Clair, came of the bowl, and Brian Voss and Ricky Ward will continue their head-to-head -head King of the Hill match. Voss leads by two pins, strike up the third, can extend his lead over Ricky Ward to 12 with a strike. Well now, Nelson, you're, you're a giver of tips. How should, how should we shoot this one? Well, Chris, I think with the strike up, you got to go for the pin count. So he's got to go over in the, the, the three in the right-hand corner and try to bounce them around and knock them out. Boss is up very quickly here, giving it a whack. This is the right thing to do. Mm. Wow. These, these pros are incredible. That's the as close as you can come without making it. Uh, one trivia note, the only player to ever make that split on ABC is in our telecast today. Doug Kent made that in 1991 in Baltimore. Doug will be in the opening match. Out of six on the left lane, and Doug will be They're bowling not easy out there, folks. I'm telling you what. <laughs> And he says they're not easy. Actually, the pros this week, for a total of 2,196 games, averaged just 196. Now, you're talking about the best players in the world, so it was a very demanding lane condition, although I think Boss is playing the wrong line. I think it's an outside line this week. Okay, coming up next, except on the West Coast on ABC Sports, we go live to the Winston West NASCAR circuit for the Auto Club 200 from the California Speedway in Fontana. California. See if Ward can jump on this open frame. He has a little better rack. The pins don't come down exactly the same every time. There's a half inch tolerance legally. Four seven. You know, this just reflects the scoring we've seen, Chris, in the last eight or nine weeks on the Pro Bowlers Tour. The uh, PBA has opted to put out a very demanding lane condition, and obviously the best pullers are getting to the top. you got the Webers and the Walter Rays, but it's very difficult to score. Ten pins separating these two professionals. 28-year-old Ricky Ward, <laughs> at whom we're looking. Uh, it's time for the pipe. <laughs> He likes the nickname that we coined for him last week. As you look at the beef, I call him the beef. He once posed for a ladies' beefcake magazine. This guy likes the nickname Bulldog. Yeah. Strike in the sixth frame for Ricky Ward. Now, uh, boss back up for the spare working. He'll be shooting in the sixth. A little contemplating here by boss. I think his best One move. More time. One more time. He's, 
He's way over here in front of the ball return rack, slide in this area, and it'll be right over the center line. Now, this is very dry right here in the center, though, so he really has to project the ball. All right, Beef, here's what you do. That inside line's not working. Here you see the angle he's playing between the fourth and fifth arrows, trying to just sail it back in the pocket, but it's very dry in the center of the lane. The best shot, you'll see it from our power finalist, will be outside the first arrow. Spare in the sixth for Brian Voss. Andrea, Joshua, and Cameron in Atlanta watching this telecast. They're, they never miss one when dad and husband is on the tube. Can't blame him. Not only no. a great player, but uh, make $10,000 if you can win this game. Here we go, seventh frame. Second strike of this match. And look at the Illinois just across the mighty Mississippi from St. Louis. We just had a nice thing happen to him as we look at Ricky Ward. Uh, two dozen roses, red and white, with the card good luck and best wishes in your new endeavors. Clyde and Marcy Ward. I oh, will try to read those again. But thank you, Ward, for your son. We appreciate it. Taste and flowers, oh, believe me. Good. They are gorgeous. Right, Lorinda? The two. Okay, Nelson Burton, Jr. Thank you, Chris. With me is Doug Kent. Doug, fourth place, uh, 36 years on ABC. What is your best memory of the telecast? 36 years? I'm only 30 years old, so I, <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, I think I, I really like the old shows of Mark Roth and Marshall Holman. Those shows have so much uh, quality and mem good memories. But my, the one that stands out the most is probably the year I bowled Pete Weber in his hometown. And I'm looking for a rematch today, and hopefully that'll happen. He's a great young player coming up, Chris, and he'll be in the next match. You bet. And he's from a lovely area, Canandaigua, New York. And Ricky now will have to attempt to cover 3-5, and shouldn't be any problem for him. Ricky Ward of North Fort Myers, Florida. Good spare there. That was a spare. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at this careful setup by Brian Voss. Eight ten on the right lane. All right, boss, trying an outside line now. He, he gave up on that inside, and the ball sails a long oil. He's a two eight ten, a split we see so often in the PBA Tour. The best thing he can do is just try to bounce the two and eight over into the ten. No can do. No, Bo. It's sec second open frame now. Got to finish on that lane. Bo. All right, Chris, and with me over here is Steve Jero. Steve, uh, obviously, uh, you're only 30 years old, and so you couldn't see the first six years of the PBA Tour, but what's your fondest memory? Well, I'll tell you, I think I'm uh, much like everybody else. I, I think I used to rush home from junior leagues to watch the Tour growing up. There's a lot of idols out here that I get to compete against now. Um, among that, I, I got to win my first title the first time I was ever on TV, and I'll, I'll never forget that. There's memories that'll last a lifetime. He's a great player. He'll be up in the next match, Chris, and he was very kind to me. He only beat me 498 pins this week. Back to you. <laughs> The bow, like the Olympic creed, it's not in winning, but taking part. <laughs> Spare in the ninth frame, and Ricky Ward leads by 24. Spare up, ninth frame shot. Well, Ricky Ward's going to win this match, Chris, by default. Uh, the very demanding conditions we've seen all year. And once again, uh, it kind of reflects in the 300s. In 1996, there were six perfect games per tournament. This year, there's only been three perfect games per tournament. So much more demanding lane conditions. 
You know, tonight on ABC, it's a whole new look on Saturday night. First, Urkel and the Family Matters gang moved to Saturday, followed by Mark Curry in the season premiere of Hangin' with Mr. Cooper. Then Annie Potts stars in Dangerous Minds, followed by an all-new spy game. Tonight, you want to be on ABC. Nine pins for a victory on the first ball. Nine pins. 10,000 right there. So, I'm happy. The son of the parents that sent us flowers, Bo. Oh, my. So nice. I'll tell you what, Brian Voss, nice guy, too. He says, hey, oh, you yeah. happy with that 10,000? Well, the boat dog ate the beef today. 194 with a spare. Oh, my, my step up in front of you, dude. There's the winner as this ABC Sports presentation. Our professional bowlers tour will continue after this word from our ABC station. The PBA and also the PBA tour. Uh, one of the most wonderful men I've ever known, though. Uh, he represented both of us as well. Yes. Eddie Alas, who's recuperating in uh, uh, Naples, Florida. And, and there's a shot of him. One of the most energetic and brilliant. Wonderful guys. What a super, super genius. And with his wife, Peggy, in better days. The Big E. The thing Miss you can you. say about Eddie Elias is brilliant and loyal. Two great qualities. Now, the godfather of professional bowling, he can watch two of his young warriors, Steve Jaros and Doug Kemp. Neither having been born when we started this with Eddie in 1962, 30-year-old Doug Kemp. Both these guys are going to make a lot of telecasts. They are really starting to make their stock worthwhile out here. And you see Doug, who's a very versatile player, big guy, strong, opting for a little bit different line on the left-hand lane, that outside line, which I think is the best. You see him for his spare. It's going to be a pretty simple spare shot. Great technique, no hook at all, just a dead straight ball. He may even hit the thumb hole. the name Doug Kent, you know what the fellow bowlers nicknamed him, don't you? C-L-A-R-K. If he keeps improving, uh, they'll take that with uh, real meaning right now. Now, Steve Jaros, who's had one of the hottest years on the Pro Bowlers Tour, you want to see a contemporary release. Watch his release. Teach your son that if you're teaching him to bowl. Solid eight. Yes, I guess. <laughs> They're tough enough without getting wrapped. Steve Jaros being watched by his mother, his fiance, and her parents. Okay. A little bit uh, later on today, you're going to see some video clips. The history of the tour, a little history on me, uh, a little on Bo, and uh, very important is the video clip that salutes the people that make this happen, those technical and production stars of 97. You'll see their names, and I want you to applaud when it comes up. Wow. Crossing over, and unfortunately a 3-9 for... Steve Jaros, our statistician, as always today, is just doing a great job. Mr. Butch Soper, no finer gentleman have we met. Ah. Oh. Apprehension about that sleeper nine. with Mr. Ward. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Ricky, uh, kind of a tough one victory there, 10,000 bucks. But second question, you're 28 years old. How long have you been watching the tour, and what's your fondest memory? 
Well, uh, I, I'd have to say the fondest memory is the first title, and obviously the second one was uh, awesome, too. And uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years, but uh, I'd like to thank uh, Bo and Chris for like being two, the greatest two announcers in our game today. And i also like to thank Brunswick for some fine bowling balls. Thank you. Good luck. And he's going to win a lot more, Chris. Back to you, Parts. Okay. And by the way, Ricky, if you're listening, thanks for the flowers. Now Doug Kent. That strike came in the second frame. You can make it a 12 pin advantage of the strike here. Yeah. All right. Well, our first double of the match are of the day. Doug Kent, and I like the line these guys are playing. They're not playing much hook. Pretty good revolutions, 12 to 14 revs on the ball, but down the boards. Both players very versatile. They can hook it off the lane or muscle it straight down. That is a 10 pin on the right. It is very humid outside, very, very warm. A lot of mold spores in the air. Uh, so you get a few sniffles along the way. And the pins have the sniffles, Chris. They yeah, actually yeah. absorb some of that humidity and can gain as much as two ounces and lose their bounce. Jarrus with a little powder on his thumb. Just works it to get it smooth so he can relax it. His fiance, June Dubiakis. Kind of a tough one to say. They're getting married on September 6th in Honeymoon in Japan. Okay. Well, the game tightens up as we look at June D, and we'll be back. gold medalist Mia Hamm spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioner stays suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Mia. But she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it. Wouldn't you? Pert Plus. Simply great hair. Simply. Is my wife still in there? Oh, long door. Oh, whatever the look you like. It's so... Jill, you okay in here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Help keep that look with Kellogg's Special K cereal. Great toasted taste, 110 calories, and fat-free. Do you like it? Fine. Oh, yeah. Kellogg's Special K. Great taste never looks so good. You look, uh, cold. Right. <laughs> Best NASCAR drivers in the West meet on the new California Speedway. These are little old ladies from Pasadena. The Auto Club 200, next on ABC Sports. Sunday, this week with Sam Donaldson and Cokie Roberts makes news in his first major interview on either shore since becoming Britain's Prime Minister, Tony Blair from the Denver Summit Sunday. We are in Southern Illinois, capacity crowd at St. Clair Bowl. Fans realizing that uh, the television cameras are once again illuminated, <laughs> and uh, they have been so supportive of this tournament the last uh, 1997. Yeah. Now he has a three bagger and a 23 10 lead. Okay, Nelson. Thank you, Chris. Uh, a man who's 34 years old, Peter, obviously the first two years of the PBA, you weren't even around. I've known you since a little kid and one of the great players. What is your most fond memory of the tour? Well, Bo, uh, gosh, it's, it's so, so hard to say, but I guess the one that sticks out is obviously the trophy dropping. <laughs> you know, remember me beating you in St. Louis? That wasn't very memorable, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck this week, Peter. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> Incidentally, in the highlights of um, this series, um, there is a replay on the trophy dropping. 
And we're in Anheuser-Busch country, of course, near near St. Louis, and it was the Anheuser-Busch Eagle Trophy, gorgeous thing. And as a class that they are, they replaced it. Yeah. Okay, Doug Kent, uh, he opened with a spare, three in a row, another spare here in the fifth frame of the opening game in the battle for the title of the St. Clair Classic. Steve Jaros hasn't won a match on national television since 1993 at Edmond, Oklahoma. He is zero and eight in his last eight attempts. This is the line he's playing. I like it. By doubling, he has cut the lead of um, Kent to 12. The winner to meet Pete Weber and then Walter Ray Williams Jr. What an incredible field. You have the numbers one and two bowlers in the world in the number one and two positions. And as you see Jaro's shot, he is ranked number nine in the world, and Doug Kent, no schlouts, 14th in the world. Top players. I had the luxury of bowling 18 games with Steve uh, this week as you see him drifting a little bit high on this left hand lane and he has a very solid spare game. Watch how he cuts that hook down and goes across lane for this 3-6. Very important to have this shot in your bag. Okay. This series for 36 years always produced by ABC Sports. Edgar Sherrick and Chet Simmons sports programs got together with Eddie Elias, made it happen, and then sports programs was purchased by the American Broadcasting Company, and Rune Arley just took it from there, sailed it high. Well, Doug Kent, from that inside line we saw Brian Boss featuring, uh, is finally came somewhat close to the pocket. You see him that deep inside line for the four pin, he has a little different technique than some of the players. He avoids the right side of the lane and shoots it straight down here. Now, if you can't throw a straight ball, you can't try it. You'd have to come across this way. I still like this angle best over here to the left of your screen, but Kent's a good spare shooter. Okay. I first uh, met Doug as he came on tour in 1988. He won his first title, actually a regional title. The PBA is broken down into seven regions as an amateur. He was a guest, wiped out the field, and this has been his livelihood since, and he is really a rising star. Sliding, 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 leaving the one, two, four on the left lane. Well, you see Doug just throwing the ball through the break. The PBA has oiled the lanes 25 feet. They've buffed it down to 35 feet, or 28 to 35. And what happens if you throw it a little too hard to make it hold up at the pocket, then it slides by the head pin. Very demanding shot-making condition, and it's absolutely mandatory that you be a good spare shooter when you have this type of conditions. Doug Kent going against Steve Jaros. Ten pins separating them. So, where do you want this? Hey now, <laughs> I ordered a new copier. This is better than new, my friend. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, what do we have here? Wow. Enlarges too. Yeah. Whoa. Even collates. <laughs> I'll take it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I didn't think I could shove this baby through. At National, we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of Emerald Club. Join today and save time by walking past the rental counter and straight to the car you want to drive. National Car Rental. You've got places to go. We've got the keys. Troy Aikman is back to pass. He's looking, looking, and ooh, Aikman's down. He had a man wide open. What was this guy thinking? Brute, it's all part of the game. All right, guys, same play. Here's Walter Ray Williams, Jr., number one in the world, and he's number one in this tournament. 
right now. Steve Jaros up in the eighth frame, left a 4-7 spare in the seventh. Trails by 12. 